Hi, I'm David Jindra from Kulta Games and this is Merchants of Kulta. In a not too distant future, scientists discovered a new planetary system called Kulta. Their planet sent the merchants to Earth to trade with us human. They stay for two days and then travel back home. And they landed, how else could it be, in the beautiful city of Vienna, which we'll later on see on the backgrounds of the cards. We are humans who travel to Vienna to trade with these merchants. And after two days, so two rounds in the game, we'll check who has the goods with the highest total value and that person wins the game. So in this video I'm going to show you the setup and how to play and the rules. And after this video you should be able to play the game and enjoy Merchants of Kulta. So let's get started. Before we start with the setup, I want to talk about the merchant cards. There's a pool of 30 unique merchants, each being different from one another. For a round, we will only pick up to 9 of these cards, but we will come to that later during the setup. Let's have a closer look at the details of the cards. There are 6 important informations on each card. This bar here shows you what goods the merchant trades with, and sometimes also other rewards that you receive when reaching a deal with him. During the setup, you place the indicated good onto this place here. So here in this example, it would be a purple one. Um, there, on these fields here, you can see how many dice you can use uh, while negotiating with this merchant. For example, if there are two, you can use up to two dice here, okay? If there would only be one, then you can only use one. Then there are the merchant actions. Each merchant offers you actions if you roll the right result. These are indicated here. If you roll them, then you also have to execute them. The next part here is the reference number. They're actually not important for it during the game, but before and after game for the setup, you may use them. Because if you, if you want to play with the beginner set, you have to check out these reference numbers. Also, if you play with, with a really cool set and you want to remember it and write it down, you just write down the reference number. Last but not least, here's the name. You also don't necessarily need this part here because during the game it makes no difference what name the merchant has, but if you want to go into all this fantasy culto world, then you can, you can definitely use those names and say, oh, I want to trade with the bronze and so on because, well, I do love it, and I guess some others, maybe you as well, do too. Now we're ready for the setup. I've prepared a three-player scenario for you. Up here you can see how many cards you'll need for the different amount of players. So, I prepared a beginner's game for three players. All you need to do is to take the merchant cards with the reference number M1 to M7. In addition, you take the saboteur card, this one here, with the reference number S1. In general, there is no certain order to place these cards. Just check that everybody has a good look at them. You can always move the cards around during the game, so don't worry too much about that now. Second thing, we place all the stated intergalactic goods on the cards. So here you see which goods they have and you put them just here in that area. If there is more than one shown on the card, like here, just place both goods onto the card. Lastly, every player gets 6 dice and a reference card. Now that we've prepared everything, let's determine a starting player randomly. And then we're good to go. At the beginning of our turn, we choose a merchant we want to trade with. In this case, we choose the bronze. We take one of our dice and roll it to initiate the negotiation. The higher the result, the better is our argument. Like in real life, most of the time a deal is not settled with the first words. So, well, let's roll now. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna imagine now we have a 1. Um, in Merchants of Kulta, you can re-roll your dice as long as your result increases. Here an example. So first I roll a 1. I'm gonna re-roll it and this time, imagine, I'm gonna roll a 4. Well, the result increased, so we're allowed to re-roll again. We do it again and this time, unfortunately, we rolled a 3. Ugh! Since our result did not increase this time, we have to stick with it. In this scenario, our 3 triggers an action, which you can see here. This action allows us to increase one die in game by one. We choose to increase our 3 to 4, 
And in our final step, we place our die on the merchant card to indicate that we're in a negotiation. Now comes the best part, chain reactions. Okay, so I prepared a little scenario for you to show you how these chain reactions work. As you can see, some dice have already been rolled. It's our turn and we choose to trade with the Pelican. The black player is already in negotiation with him, so to steal his deal, we need a higher result than his 4. Let's say we fold a 4 as well. Since our result isn't higher, it wouldn't be enough to steal the deal. We could re-roll, but I'll show you something better. We could use the merchant action to help us out of here. It lets us turn over one die to the other side. So let's do this. We could simply turn over the black die from a 4 into a 3 and then compare and we would be higher and steal the deal. But you know what? I will show you something even cooler. So instead of doing this, we choose another die to turn over. We choose this blue one. We turn over the 4 into a 3 and PADUSH! Chain reaction. This 3 triggers another action here. Here with the bronze. So this 3 allows us to increase one die by one. And we go back again to our die here, increase it to a 5. Because all actions triggered during your turn are also executed by you. It doesn't matter who the dice actually belongs to. So now our 5 is higher than the 4. We are higher, we steal the deal, and this 4 has been put back into the box. And our turn is over. So. That's basically how a turn works. Step one, choose a merchant card. Step two, roll and re-roll. Step three, execute triggered actions. Step four, compare results and place your die on top of the card. There are just a few tiny things I have to tell you right now and then we're basically done. So let's get to these. As I told you at the beginning, most merchants allow you to use up to two dice. This is indicated by these spots here. If you decide to roll with two dice instead of one, your result is always a decimal number. Higher, point lower result. In this example it would be a 5.2. If you decide to re-roll, you have to re-roll both dice. Again, you can re-roll as long as your result increases. In this scenario, you would need at least a 5.3. The highest result in the game, however, are doubles, meaning two dice showing the same number. In this example here, it would be a doubles one. That means a doubles is also higher than a 6.5. If you roll with two dice, both can trigger actions. This 5.3, for example, would trigger each action once. If you have triggered more than one action, you can always choose the order in which they are executed. At the beginning of your turn, you're also able to continue an active negotiation. So rolling to a merchant card with already one of your dice on it. There has to be a free space for a second die though. Then you can at the beginning of your turn say, okay, I will continue trading with this one. You roll, you re-roll, oh perfect, doubles five. So that's how it works. The Saboteur card is a little different than the others. He offers you no rewards and brought no gifts with him. At the end of your turn, your dice are also not placed on the card, but are removed. Except, the triggered action says otherwise. You can still use up to two dice while negotiating with him. His role is to saboteur the deals because he kinda hates these strange aliens. Let's go through your turn again. Step 1. You choose a merchant card. You can either choose a new one or choose an active negotiation and continue it. Step 2. Roll and re-roll your dice. So here you have to decide whether you're using one die or two dice. You have to check whether the merchant card allows it or not. Step 3. Um, activate your triggered actions, okay? Watch out for possible chain reactions and execute them all now. Step 4. Compare the results. Remove the lower ones and just keep in mind your result has to be higher to steal the deal. In the end, place your die on top of the card if your result is higher. So we go through the last things and then we're basically done. Some merchants offer actions which are triggered at the beginning or at the end of your turn. 
so either before you start your turn or after you ended it. Like all other actions, you have to execute them. In this example here, the gas decreases all the results of all your dice on the card by one at the end of all your turns. So for example, when your turn ends, you turn this five into a four and this four into a three. On the other hand side here, at the beginning of all your turns, the Candras increases all your dice here by one, so this five will turn into a six. It is important to know that a one cannot be decreased and a six cannot be increased any further. So let's add these little things to our turn. Step one, check active negotiations. Step two, choose a merchant card. Step three, roll and reroll. Step four, activate triggered actions, compare the results, and then in the end, check your active negotiations again. So, turns are played clockwise. Once everybody ran out of dice, the round ends. If you run out of dice before the others do, your turns are just simply skipped. So when everybody ran out of dice, the round ends, everybody reaches their deals, and then you get your intergalactic goods. Some merchants offer you different goods depending on your result. The Arapi, for example, gives you the blue good if you have a 4, and the purple one if you have a 5. If you would have any other result than 4 or 5, you would get nothing. In this case scenario, we would get the purple one. Other merchants like the Arrakis offer you additional actions which are triggered by the end of the round. Here you would choose a player who starts the next round with one die less. So the setup for the second round is pretty similar to the first one. Together you decide whether you want to stick to the same set of merchant cards or if you want to switch some. So you can either draw them randomly or you can decide and choose some. After you did that step, you take the stated intergalactic goods and again, like, like during the first setup, put them onto the merchant cards. Every player receives six dice again, okay? But it, just remember, it is possible that a player starts with less or more than these six dice. The player who has the highest total value of points by the end of the game wins the game. If there is a tie, the player who received the most points during the last round wins. If there's still a tie, well, then you share the victory. That was our How to Play Merchants of Kulta video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you have any further questions, write them in the comments and as soon as possible I will answer you. Um, feel free to check out our social media channels, which should be somewhere around here in the picture. I don't know where, but they're gonna be here certainly. And Please, a big, big applause. I know he will hear you even though you're behind the screen and well, practically it won't work, but yes, he will hear you and check out, please check out his, his video channel for the person who was, who was responsible for recording this video and the final cut and everything and made this possible. It's passion for shootings and his profile should also be <laughs> somewhere here. Check it out, he's got some real cool stuff and tips for you how to, how to record and how to cut and everything. So. Thanks to him, this video was recorded and was really, really cool. So, thanks again, Daniel. And, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy playing Merchants of Cooldown. See ya!